I'm Mary Ellen Fitzgerald, and I work on the Mount Hood National Forest. The field I work in is the Special Uses Administration Group. There's dozens of different kinds of special uses that we have on the Mount Hood. Examples are ski areas, outfitter guides, recreation events, more uh, power lines, uh, sewer lines, water lines, communication towers, beekeepers, uh, and then we have non-commercial group uses also like um, a church group that maybe wants to do a special trek on the Barlow Road. A few things to think about when putting your proposal together. You want to have, we want you to have success, so key, key thing is make sure you use the right form. Most prospective permit holders are going to fill out the SF-299 and be using the Mount Hood supplement that helps them get all the specifics that we need on this forest. Um, but be sure and check uh, the website. There's a chart that shows which form you use for which kind of proposal you have. And make sure it's complete. That includes a map that is really crystal clear and can be photocopied and reproduced easily. Ideally, you'd be able to submit it to us electronically. To do a real quick summary, you know, step one is become familiar with the process on our website, make sure you have the right application form, and know if there's an open season, if you need to submit your proposal during an open season. Also during, again, more of that pre-proposal is, maybe vet your idea with us over the phone. Give us a call and say, hey, I'm thinking of this. What are your thoughts? Are there any fatal flaws? Step two is submitting your proposal. Okay, so make sure it's complete. If things are missing, we're going to send it back to you. And if you don't get it back to us again in the open season window, we can't accept it. Getting that application really just clean and really focus on the purpose and need as you're getting that application together. Step three is for the Forest Service to review your proposal through the screening criteria and accept it or not. At that point, it would become, if it's accepted, it becomes an application. Step four is to enter into a cost recovery agreement if needed, and that varies on the use and how much environmental review. Step five is to do that environmental review, and there's multiple steps within that. And then step six is the second decision the line officer has to make, and that is making a decision on the environmental review, whether to issue a permit or not, basically, whether to authorize the activity. Final step is to actually issue the permit. A common question we get asked is how long will it take to get your permit? And that depends on the complexity of the project. Some projects are very simple, uh, especially if it doesn't include any ground disturbance, and others are more complex, so there isn't a straightforward answer on that. When you submit your proposal, once it's accepted, we can probably give you a, a pretty good idea of that. If you're under a tight timeline, we, we might not be able to make it. That's where calling us ahead, vetting your idea with us, so you know what's realistic. Many of you already have permits with the Mount Hood National Forest and your proposal involves making a change to your existing permit. And possibly you've already vetted this idea with the line officer, the district ranger, for example, or with your permit administrator. We still need you to submit the proposal during the open season. So thanks for watching. Um, we want our prospective permit holders to have success in their application process. So use all the tools that we have on our website. Give us a call to vet ideas and sound things off. And look forward to hearing from you.